I'm glad that this week's P is something that I'm very passionate about, which is the topic of passion <laughs> itself. I've always been interested in how interests drive learning. Mm -hmm. Again, I had mentioned that my younger brother, because of his interest in music, he continues to learn things because of that. That drives a lot of his learning in many, many different areas. So I was surprised when I went to Harvard Education School. I learned a lot there, but one thing that really surprised me that at the time there was only one day where they talked about motivation. And I felt like I had already seen, given my little limited experience in education, but also more just in my own watching people and my own learning, how much interests drive learning. So actually recently I went back to study motivation itself in, in the doctoral program. And I was excited to see that more and more work has been done on motivation and more people are paying attention to it, something that we've talked about a lot. Yeah, I know working together with you has really sort of made me more aware of this aspect of the learning process. I think so many things we've worked on together have been about how we can sort of build on people's interests. And I think it's given me a lens for starting to see learning of all types. And you see it happening in many people's learning stories, but then you can also see some cautionary tales about how people are at risk if they avoid, if they you know ignore the idea of interest. One idea that one story that comes to mind is I'd read the autobiography a number of years ago about E. O. Wilson, mm -hmm. uh, the Harvard scientist who studied ants, you know, mm -hmm. the world's leading expert in studying ants. And it turns out when he was a child, he probably became interested in ants because his eyesight wasn't good, and he started you know got a magnifying glass and became really fascinated with studying ants. And you could just see that childhood fascination led to a lifelong passion for studying ants, colonies, the way systems of ants behave. So I thought it was a great story about how he followed his passion and you know and then did wonderful things with that. But then I read an article, a review in the newspaper about it, and someone was telling the story about a teacher who had read E.O. Wilson's autobiography and then thought, this is great, and then brought into the classroom by having all the kids study ants. And in my mind, that was exactly the wrong way, uh, the wrong lesson to take. The lesson shouldn't be that everyone should study ants, but everyone should follow their own passion. I think we see this too often, that people focus on the content, you know, like answer what's important, but rather, you know, what's important. And I know it's not easy to support that passion. That's yeah. one thing we'll be talking about, the challenges. Uh, but, you know, for me, that lesson from, you know, the story of E.O. Wilson is, helping people find their passion and learn, supporting them so they can keep building on it. Mm -hmm. it's, it's actually interesting. It, in a way, passion is also the topic that brought us together mm -hmm. because <laughs> I was involved in the badges you know, project oh, yeah. and you were giving the badges presentation framed around motivation yeah. you know, much more broadly. Right. And I, I came there and we met at uh, that conference. We started talking about, <laughs> I think we realized yeah. that we had very shared kind of values around motivation and interests even though we were even, talking a little bit we we were having difference of opinion about badges itself maybe well i don't so, even think we okay. the di difference was as big as right, it seemed right but, i mean first i thought yeah. that was kind of the the starting point also that we realized there's something some similarity even though maybe we disagree on badges yeah. uh, but that the basic idea yeah. of importance of motivation uh, yeah yeah um, like in peer-to-peer -peer university you said i mean that's a key part of it is yeah, I mean, everything, I, I actually, I was going to, as you guys were speaking now, I realized that maybe there's a better story even, okay. which is um, when I was a little boy, I became very interested in uh, <laughs> hydrogen. Mm -hmm. uh, the, people were talking about the hydrogen car because mm -hmm. uh, this was a while ago and there was um, the toxic rain in Germany was a big issue. It was killing the trees and people were thinking about how can we make cars that don't have emissions and hydrogen seemed like one possibility. And I started thinking about hydrogen. I must have been about nine years old. And I thought, well, you know, if, if hydrogen is uh, burned, it becomes water. And so couldn't you just recycle the water, make hydrogen, burn it in the mm -hmm. car? And I sent a letter to the, um, the Automobile Association of Germany. And my dad encouraged me. My dad didn't, mm -hmm. it was kind of this crazy thing I was doing. And he just said, well, I'll just send them a letter. And I sent them a letter, but I got a reply. And it was amazing that reply made all the difference in a way. Like I had this curiosity, but then I, I got a serious reply where the person explained to me that, you know, the amount of hydrogen you extract from water is 
too low and the mm. energy you need is too high and the car wouldn't wouldn't and yeah. like engaged with me like a real scientist uh. and then i ended up doing the experiments in high school actually later i did do i did separate water into hydrogen and oxygen and i did try really? this out and i measured how much how much hydrogen but it was really it started with that interest and then the letter and then the response and so I, I ended up doing something totally different with my life, but it was that was a really important learning experience. It does seem that like starting with the interest and then connecting with a community or other people yes. who are interested in the same thing. Yeah. yeah, and then and then how sort of that interest leads you to persist, and that's another issue that you've thought that we've been thinking about a lot. What is it that helps people to sort of persist with their interest and follow through on things? Yeah, that was something that came up in the community this week. Sue Alexander talked about that. She said in the, with the piano that, well, I'll read what she said. At the piano, I learned about grit because, frankly, I wasn't very good. Passion and perseverance carry me through the discordant sounds and stopovers until finally, yeah, yeah so the, anyway, so she went from there to playing in the church concerto, but it was really persisting because I, she was interested. Yeah. And I realized one thing, it, it, it comes up sometimes, I react against with these days a lot of people talk about the importance of just being repetitive and doing things over and over in order to build expertise. And I resist that at first because if we want to help support people be creative learners, this idea of repetitive, sticking in, doing the basics. On the other hand, I really like when people have pointed out that if you really need to build expertise that way, it's why passion is so important. If you need to sort of continue to work at things so hard, you better choose things that you're deeply passionate about you're not going to be able to stick with it. So that idea that it, well, the only things that you're really passionate about, that you care about deeply, will you stick with the, you know, the all the work that's needed in order to really achieve that expertise with that. Yeah. So, anyway, I think uh, it'll be nice to sort of build on some of these, you know, ideas as we uh, look at the the rest of this week, as we look at some of the issues with the Computer Clubhouse, which was founded on some of these ideas. Yeah. So we just thought we would go visit there. So okay. we'll talk about that next. Great. I didn't get the idea. I know.